I want to just look today at um, the text. I'm not going to read the context. Dr. Watkins did that. So let's look at verse 18 of um, Genesis chapter 5. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God for 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 days, years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, this morning I am beginning Uncle George a new series of messages for this new year entitled The Walk of the Believer. Everyone say The Walk of the Believer. And uh, many of you are aware, son, that the Christian life uh, Larry is often described in similes or allegories, in symbols and in types. Uh, there are words, uh, Lee, there are phrases, uh, idioms, as it were, that are often used to depict and to describe the Christian life. For instance, uh, the Christian life is described, Deacon Dorcas, as a witness. And uh, we are told, Jesus tells us, that we are the light of the world. That we are the salt of the earth. That we are a city set on a hill. And that we are to let our light shine. So that men, women, boys and girls, People all around us will see our good works. Now, now, Deborah, here's the catch. And not glorify us, but glorify the Father. I, I, all right, I wish I had church here. Would you look at the neighbor and say, it's not about you. Amen. Whatever you and I do in the cause of the kingdom, in the name of the Lord, it's never about getting something drawn to us. It's about lifting up Jesus. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are a city set on a hill. We ought to let our light shine so that others see our good work, see the way we live and glorify the Father in heaven. The writer of Hebrews says that we are living in a dark and dismal world, but he also says, the writer of Hebrews, that we are to live in that world shining as lights in the darkness. That the darker the world, Tracy, the greater the light of our witness ought to be. Christian life is likened to, described, depicted, in many ways defined as witness. But not only is the Christian life defined and depicted and described as witness, uh, the Christian life is also simile, type, shadow, allegory, is also described as warfare. Now, I'm going to lose all, all, all my shouters on the first point are going to become mute on this point. We're not just witnesses. We're not just to let our light shine. We're not just to be bold, brave, brilliant witnesses for the Lord. But, but the Christian life, your life, my life, as we live for God, is also described as warfare. That's why the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians tells us that we ought to get dressed up every day by putting on, I feel like preaching, 
the whole armor of God. I, I, I know some of y'all haven't talked to your neighbor since last year. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you dressed? Now, 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 I know, I know y'all saying, well, what a, what a silly question. Of course, I would never come to church naked. That's for another sermon. <laughs> I don't mean, are you wearing Fendi and Versace? I'm not talking about whether or not you're wearing Sean John. Well, what I'm asking you today is as a believer, when you got up this morning, after you put on your dress, after you put on your shirt and tie, did you dress yourself in the whole armor of God? Because, beloved, the world in which we live is not friendly territory. There's a war going on, Tony. And if you're not going to win the war, and Lynette, we're going to fight the war, we got to put on the whole armor armor of God. Let me say this and I'm going to quickly move on. want to just hit this one lick. Deacon Skelton uh, Paul is very clear that the weapons we use are not natural. We don't use our fists. Sister Aubrey we don't use our fists to fight. Okay I lost all of y'all. We don't use our fists to fight. We don't use our mouth to cuss folk out. Come on, y'all, come on. We don't use our Twitter page and our Facebook account to run people down and settle disputes and argument. If you got something against somebody, be big enough, bad enough, man enough, woman enough to go to them and not put it all over social media. I feel like preaching today. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't fight with our fists. We don't fight with our finite human strength. No, we put on the whole armor of God so that we might be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all, we keep on standing. Because the grace of God and the life of God and the power of God is efficaciously and effectively working in our lives. Christian life, I'm, I'm pretty near through. Christian life is likened to simile, allegory, type, symbols, uh, to witness and to warfare. But brothers and deacons, uh, there's one more. Uh, there are many, but I'm only going to hit three because I'm a three kind of preacher. <laughs> and, and the third way, you, your next pastor will probably be a four kind of preacher. <laughs> but I'm a three kind of preacher. They, they, everyone say witness, uh, warfare. But then the third, uh, Deacon Sylvia, the third allegorical illustration for the Christian life is that of walking of walking and, and for the next uh, for the next um, uh, for the next several however long it take <laughs> I, I'm going to be walking my way through looking at the various expressions and aspects and facets and components of the Christian life and I thought on this first day of the year, this first Sunday of the new year, in introducing this thematic thrust of the, of the walk of the believer, I thought I'd deal with the most famous walker in the Bible. <laughs> and that's this man by the name of Enoch. L last night, those who were here and those who watched online, you know that I preached from that passage of Jesus encountering those two forlorn disciples on the road to Emmaus. How he went with them, even though they were walking away. How he went with them, even though they were not aware of who he was. And how he went with them so that he might awaken in them a sense of who he was. 
We looked last week, Mom Aaron, last night rather, we looked at, at, at how Jesus walks with us, comes to us on our Emmaus roads. When we are forlorn and discouraged and downhearted, he comes to us and walks with us. Jesus himself, the text said, drew near. Having looked last night at Jesus walking with us, I thought I'd, I'd flip the script and turn the corner and look today at this man who walked with God. And Enoch, who walked with God. What a, what, what a powerful testimony. I'm going to say this, Deacon Liz, if I got to drop the mic and run out the room. Whatever else you can't do. Oh, God, I'm about to set somebody free. Let me put my glasses on so I can connect with more. So, watch this. Uh, Terry Burks, uh, Sister Evelyn. Uh, watch, watch this, watch this. Erica, but Bill Gardner, Elder Kathy Lockhart. L listen, whatever else you can't do, can't sing. <laughs> Some of y'all need to admit that. Can't sing. <laughs> can't preach. Some folk need to admit that. <laughs> can't sing, can't preach. Can't give a lot of money. Whatever your can't-do list consists of, can I cheer you up on the first day of the year to tell you if you can't do anything else, you can walk with God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Would you look at a neighbor and say, even I can do that. I may not be able to do what Pastor Kelly does or what First Lady does or what some other personality in the church does. But if I'm committed to Christ and yielded my life to Christ, I feel an unction right there. I can walk with God. Walking with God is not the purview of the bishop. Uh, walking with God is not the purview of the high and mighty third, fourth generation believers, but somebody straight off the street. God, I wish I had a church here, Dion. I wish, I wish, I mean, I love, y'all know I love you. I love me some y'all. I do. I love me some y'all. I'm so proud of y'all. But every now and then, I wish y'all would go out there and rent a sinner. They ought to have Cundalkis rent a sinner. And y'all just bring a sinner to church who's not feeling as if they did God a favor because they showed up, but who realizes they were a wreck and a mess and God saved them. Because when you realize where you've come from and what it took for Christ to save you, you get over yourself real quick. Walking with God is not the purview of those who've been in the church all their lives. Their daddy was a bishop. Their grandpa was a deacon. Their grandmother was a chairman of the deaconess board, president of the missionary society, and in charge of the Rise and Shine Biscuit Committee. They... <laughs> nah, walking with God belongs to everybody. No matter who you are, no matter, no matter but George Valentine, how recently you've gotten saved. Bruno and Teresa, if you got saved last night, you can start walking with God. Check says, and, uh, and Enoch walked with God. And, and beloved, that word, and I'm going to move on, that word uh, walk in the biblical uh, sense is an expression I want, because I, I want you to understand this it is an expression of fellowship and obedience that produces favor okay okay I'm, I'm going to try it one more time to walk with God is to be engaged and involved in how can I say this in, 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 in a level of fellowship and obedience that results 
in favor from God. That when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory. Nobody know that song but me. Well, man, you know what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his sweet will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust. I was wondering, Pop, when you're going to help me trust and obey. Trust and obey. Okay, we're, we're my church folk. Uh, uh, well, Betty, well, trust and obey for there's no other way you can be happy in Jesus. Oh. <laughs> you have to trust and obey. Then in fellowship, Sweet, let me stop. We'll sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sins we will go. Never fear, only trust him and obey him. To walk with God is to encounter, engage, be involved at a level of not just fellowship, but fellowship that produces obedience in your life that results in divine favor. There are some things you and I can't get from God unless we walk with him. And Enoch walked with God. Well, I have 20 minutes and 19 seconds. Um, they threw the clock on me. Here, here it is. Here, here it is. Uh, what does that mean? Ask a neighbor, what does that mean? Uh, the relevant question of my text is, uh, you know, I always ask a relevant question. The late Dr. Samuel D. Wood Proctor said uh, in his Hegelian approach to hermeneutics and homiletics, he said that one must always lift and raise a relevant question. My relevant question today is, uh, what, what kind of walk did Enoch have that it is said of him? Not he gave a lot of money. Not he ran the church. He was a church boss. Not that he was a spiritual godfather, but that he walked with God. C can I ask you this and I'll move on? Uh, I promise I will. I promise I won't linger long on this, but I need to just query you on this. What better epithet would you want, Edmund, than for Vivi to say, my daddy walked with God? Oh. What? Jennifer, what? What, what greater legacy could you leave those two, I used to call them little girls, grown women, that, than for them on the hour of your apostiosis and the day of your committal, that they look at you in repose and say, my mama walked with God. <laughs> my God, my, my, my God, what? Every parent in this room, while, while, while you are, while you, and, and let me, oh, I got 18 minutes. Let, while you are doing what you ought to do to provide for your family and have insurance and, and, and leave money and, and, and have a will and, 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 and make sure you leave an inheritance to your ch children, while you're doing all of that, I want to beg you today to consider that you might, you might want to leave something the attorney can't put in the will. That you leave this epitaph. My mama, my daddy, my grandma, my grandpa walked with God. What? So what does that what does that look like? What 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 does leave what does you, your, your mommy, your daddy, your grandparents? What what, what does that look like? Liz, when, 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 when your mom died, I was, I was so moved by the obituary and by her grandson who talked about her deep spirit. Because, you know, everybody spiritual ain't up in the pulpit. Okay. Everybody, Aunt Trish, really say ain't up here with a robe and a collar on. 
There's folk out there living better than a whole lot of folk up here. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me. And, and, and they talked about how she would pray for her grandchildren. Lift them before the Lord. Check on their spiritual life. Never, she never, she was an usher. That's what she was. Never had a title in this church. But on that Saturday, her grandson stood right there and talked about her spiritual impact on her seed. Don't, don't you want it said of you when you cannot speak for yourself? Oh, God, I'm about to, oh, don't, don't you want it said? by your children and your grandchildren and your brother and your sister. They walked with God. And Enoch walked with God. What does that look like? Very quickly, 16 minutes, 15 seconds. Here it is. The first thing, thank you, Hershey. The, the first thing is we notice Enoch walked with God at a pivotal point and place in his life. He walked with God at a pivotal point and place in his life. Look at verse 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. Look at verse 22. Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah 300 years. You didn't get it. That's, that's all right. That's why I got the mic. I'm the preacher. Because you're not supposed to get it till I tell you. Watch this. After the birth of his son, Deacon Randall Gaddis, Enoch began to walk with God or to live a, a life of fellowship with and obedience to God. But don't miss this. That decision, that choice came at a pivotal point in Enoch's life. And beloved, I just want to say this online and in the room. There are some moments in our lives that are life changing. And how we live after that moment. God, I thank you. <sighs> Changes everything. Pivotal moments come to all of us. The tragedy is many of us miss them or opt out to not take them and we miss the greatest opportunities in our life. Every one of us online in the room have had pivotal moments that had we embraced them would have changed the trajectory of our lives forever. The birth of his son at 65 Cause Enoch to change his life and lifestyle and start walking with God. I'm going to leave that alone, Kenny. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. But, but, but I want to say maybe something just happened in your life the last couple of days, last couple of weeks, and you ought to take the time today after this service and ask yourself, how should I respond to this? What does this call for in my life that may be life-altering and life-changing? Wait a minute, wait a minute, even if it's a failure. No, no, even if it's a mistake. Even if it's, a, if it's a sin you fell into and you've asked God to forgive you, here's the question, now that I've come through that, what does this demand of me that I change in my life? Pivotal points. L let me identify three of them, Lee, and I'll let you go. A, write this down. A crisis can do that. Crisis, a crisis. You know, they, they say the Chinese symbol uh, for crisis is two actual symbols, danger and opportunity. Crisis, a crisis, critical, crisis. Uh, what crisis are you in right now? What crisis have you just come out of that maybe God is saying, I allowed that crisis to get your attention so you can make some changes? Ooh. I 
gave, I gave you another year, 2023, but I'm not going to let you live in 23 like you lived in 2021 and 22. And I permitted, I suffered, I allowed the crisis to get your attention so you could make the change. Pivotal points. Here's B, not just crisis, sometimes challenges. You got to stop getting mad every time a challenge comes your way. And you got to see challenge as an exercise room, a fitness center, a training room. Come on, where you buff up and get strong and develop muscle and, and de develop fortitude and strength. Challenges don't come to destroy us. They come to develop us. Okay, I done lost everybody except for the ten folk up front. All of y'all in the back. Challenges don't come to destroy you or to decimate you, but to develop you. And if you go through it, you'll come through the challenge better than when you went in. I've said it across the years, and I'm through. I've said it across the years. A faith never tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Can I say it again, Sister Wanda? A faith never tested is a faith that can't be trusted. How do I know it's real if it's never tested by the storms and vicissitudes of life? How do I know I trust him if I've never had to search for him and couldn't find him? How do I know he's real if at times I've wondered, is he real? Tammy, it's in that, Kevin, it's in that. The, 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 the various vicissitudes life brings our way that our faith is made stronger. Crisis will do it. Challenges will do it. Can I give you C one more? Just plain old change will do it. Tracy, just change. I, I love that hymn. I love that hymn. Um, that line in it that says, change and decay in all around I see. Oh, thou who changes not, abide with me. Abide with me. Fast falls the even night. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. Change, decay, and all around I see. But oh thou, <laughs> hallelujah, who changes not, would you hang with me? Would you hold on to me? Change is something, y'all. I can't get witness. Let me try to focus in the back. Change is something, y'all. And change will come unannounced, uninvited, unplanned. You didn't know it was coming. And change will hit you and buckle your knees. But if you hold a God, his unchanging hand, he'll bring you through it. Enoch made a decision to walk with God at a pivotal point in his life. I got to hurry. Here's B. Here's second. Write this down. Enoch makes a decision to walk with God the priority of his life. Look at verse 22 again. Enoch walked with God, first lady, after the birth of Methuselah, 300 years, and he didn't stop having chilling. He had other sons and daughters for 300 years. Okay, let me stop right there. This is why I love preaching, because the Holy Ghost will edit your sermon. Um, thank you, Vice Chairman. Those other sons and daughters benefited from the decision Enoch made because of Methuselah. Okay, okay, here it is, here it is. They never knew a daddy who didn't walk with God. God. I, I want to I beg some man, some brother in this room today. I want to beg you on the first day of a new year, the first day of the month, the first day of the week. I want to beg you to stop being myopic and selfish and self-centered and thinking about yourself. Think about your seed. Think about the generations following. Think about how different their life will be if daddy and grandpa and papa starts walking with God. He decided at a pivotal point in his life to walk with God. The pivotal point was after the birth of his first son, Methuselah, but he had other sons and daughters. And Larry, those other sons and daughters never knew a day when their daddy didn't walk with God. Woo! 
Does that excite you as much as it excites me? That every day of their life, they saw a man living in the house who was walking with God. He made his walk with God a priority. For 300 years, this man walked with God. And let me just say this. No one does anything that long <laughs> for such a protracted period of time if it's not important to them. That word that comes to me now is the word diligence, commitment to something or someone. Now let me say this, not all those days were easy. I know y'all sitting and thinking, Pastor, just preaching up there. Um, but not all those days were easy, like our days aren't all easy. Not all those days were happy days. Yeah. I know, I know. This isn't a very happy weekend for my family. Not every day is a happy, tomorrow's not gonna be a happy day. Not every day is an easy day. Not every day was a happy day. Not, 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 not every day was a day without struggle. In, in those days, I'm sure Enoch had many trials and tests and struggles and situations. And yet through every one of those days, Enoch walked with God. 300 years, 365 days in those years, 109,500 days of walking with God. 109,500 days, Enoch walked with God through the good and the bad, the highs and the lows, the peaks and the valleys, because it was a priority. Would you stop playing God and only walk with him when your bills are paid? Would, would, would you stop playing God and only walk with him as long as he's giving you what you want? But when the bottom caves in and the top caves in and the bottom drops out, can you still say, I started with Jesus and I'm going through? <laughs> no, I can't get no help up here. Do I have anybody in here who says no matter what happens, I'm committed to him, I am I'm sold out to him, and I am going to walk with him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to make it a priority in my life. Write these three things down. A, when something is a priority, you pursue it. What's, what's important to you today, first day of the year? What's important? Whatever's important to you, you pursue it. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Because some of y'all pursuing everything but God. When something is a priority, B, you give it preference. Yeah, that's a good word. You prefer it. You place it above, in front of everything else. And when something is a priority for you, you are passionate about it. You're not lackadaisical, laissez-faire, fair, blase. You know, kind of chilling like a villain. No, you are, you are passionate and excited about anything that's a priority to you. Well, here's the third point. Enoch makes the decision to walk with God at a pivotal place and point in his life. Enoch makes a decision to walk with God and it becomes the priority of his life. Third point. Enoch makes the decision to walk with God and his life pleased God. Listen to Hebrews 11 and 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Are y'all ready? Drum roll. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. <laughs> God, I wish my voice was stronger. I'd holler right there. That before God took him, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I want to try it one more time. Before he left, he had this testimony 
that he pleased God. That, that, that Tony, he made a decision. I'm going to walk with God. I, I, I'm the father of a son, and my son needs a good daddy, and I'm going to make the decision at this pivotal point, period, juncture in my life. I'm going to walk with God. And I wish some of y'all today online in the room would make that decision. First day, 2023, I got children, I got grandchildren, I have nieces, I have nephews, and I'm going to straighten my life up. I'm going to turn my life over to God and I'm going to start walking with God. He made the decision to walk with God and it became the primary priority of his life. Nothing mattered more to him than his daily walk with God. Boy, I feel like preaching but I have a minute and a half. Nothing mattered to him more than his daily walk with God. And I wonder this morning, do I have anybody here who can say with me more than anything else? I want to know God in a real way and I walk my way walk with God to be vibrant, real, warm, fresh, and alive. I got to go, y'all. When you read that genealogy in Genesis 5, starting with Adam, everybody, I don't care how long they live, here's how it summed up, and he died. 900 years, 800 years, and he died. But it gets to Enoch, and it doesn't say, and he died. It says, and he was not because God took him. Because when you walk with God and make it the priority of your life, God will do some stuff for you that he doesn't do for everybody else. Can I get a witness up in here that God has shown you favor and God has showered favor and God has dispensed favor not because you deserve it but because he looks beyond our fault and sees our need. Would you help me close it and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, all that I am is by the grace of God and all that I have is by the goodness of God. And Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Three things I saw. A God removed him from the midst of a world that didn't know God, didn't love God. When God said, I've had enough of you living in a sin-cursed world, God removed him. And do I have anybody here that has seen God remove you from some stuff that was was meant to destroy you, removed you from a job where you were surrounded by haters, removed you from a situation where you were surrounded by folk who were plotting and planning your downfall. Would you turn, 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 and tell somebody when you please God, he will remove you. He'll take you out of the clutches of folk who don't like you and don't mean you any good because his life pleased God. God removed him, but not only did God remove him, God received him. In other words, God said, Enoch, you've been walking with me all of these years. How about today? You come on home with me. You've been walking with me, going back to work. You've been walking with me, going back home. How about today? You keep walking with me and walk over to my house and there you can be with me forever when the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are at rest. I don't tell anybody that God took our daughter because God's not a thief. When a saint dies, God doesn't take them. God receives them with open arms, with a loving heart. God says, I've been waiting on you. I heard your cry when you were sick and in pain. Is there anybody here that can shout with me? He doesn't steal our loved ones. He receives them into his presence. He received Enoch because Enoch pleased them. But not only did he remove him, not only did he receive him, but good God Almighty, he rewarded 
rewarded him because when a man's ways please the Lord when a woman's ways please the Lord he'll make even their enemies be at peace with them that's why Jesus said don't let your heart be troubled don't let it be afraid I'm going to prepare a place for you if I prepare it I'm coming back to get you that where I am there you may be also over in that city I will reward you I will give you a crown of life I got a savior good afternoon y'all I got a savior in that city ain't it that good news ain't it that good news and one of these days I'm gonna lay my burdens down take off my crown lay it at his feet ain't it that Ain't of that, ain't of that good news. Good news, the cherry is coming. Good news, the cherry is coming. Good news, he's about to crack the sky. Every eye will see him, every knee will bow, every tongue confess. Ain't of that. got a savior in that city ain't it that good news and one day I'm going to lay down my cross shoulder up my crown and take it home to my Jesus ain't it that 